Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric back again with another video. And you can see I'm on the top of this parking garage, the seventh level, and we are going to test Enhanced Summit. Um, it's called Summit but before now. we get to that, which is later in the video, I wanna to talk to you about version 10 and Navigate on Autopilot. So not regular Autopilot that has two blue lines, but Navigate on Autopilot where the Autopilot system is going to change lanes automatically and my frustration with that. So in previous software versions, I have said that I really like Navigate on Autopilot, but in this latest version 10 software update, it is just, as you can see right here, moving over to the fastest lane for no reason at all. So it just wants to be in that left lane for no reason, and it's just moving me over there, even though I have no traffic right in front of me. And it, to me, as a driver, I wouldn't choose that. So I, I found that with this latest version of the software that it's picking lanes that I wouldn't necessarily be in. As you can see here, like, why am I in this lane? There's no need for me to be all the way over in this left-hand lane. I could easily be in the second to the left-hand lane. Uh, so you can see me right there manually turning the turn signal on and then ultimately taking over um, and then the car wants to get back over and I'm just canceling it using the turn sock because it just wants to put me in that far left lane even though I know my exit is coming up here shortly. I do have my lanes change settings set to Mad Max so that's the most aggressive but you can see here it changes to the right hand lane then make changes its mind again go back to the left and then again to the right hand lane <laughs> So it's just back and forth, back and forth, and there's no cars in front of me, so I'm not sure why it's making those decisions. If you know or you have a theory, let me know down in the comment section below. Something else that I noticed with the version 10 software though is when you're making an exit, now this may be in previous versions also, so I'm sure you will let me know in the comment section below, but that gray feeler line, so not the blue line, but the gray feeler line, it's already protruding out in one direction that it knows the exit's gonna be in. And then as soon as it recognizes with the lane markings, then it will actually move the blue line over to that, which is really nice as a driver. I know that the car knows that this is my exit, it's looking for the exit, and even though I can see it. So definitely a huge improvement with Navigate on Autopilot there versus the lane change. But something else in just regular autopilot, as you can see we're in regular autopilot now, from a stop, stop light, it's more aggressive in keeping up with traffic. In previous software versions, it would really lag behind and be very soft on the pedal to the point where I would push the pedal. I do try a left-hand turn here, but I do end up taking over because it was gonna head straight through. But really nice how it now picks up the pace a little bit coming from a complete stop with this new version 10 software. So in an older video, I talked about these floor mats that I got and I wanted to give you guys an update. I got different floor mats that are almost identical to the really super expensive ones that Tesla sell. And let me tell you why I love these first of all. So I always put my foot right here and the older floor mats did not have a cover so dirt would collect right at the bottom there. And so th this is one piece now so you have nothing that collects there and it's so easy to clean these. Obviously you can see I've been using these and I have not cleaned it but it's really easy to just hose them down or dump out all the dirt. And I love that this border goes all around so even when my kids are in the back seat with dirty shoes or they're dropping food on the floor, it's so easy to clean up. These are by far the best Model 3 floor mats that I've used and I've used probably about four or five of them. I've only shown you guys one other one because the other ones that I've used were just complete junk. You can see that these are definitely high quality and look very similar to the ones we have in the Model X that we paid 250 or so for. Way too much money if you buy them from Tesla, even though you get this beautiful Model X thing um, on there. But as you can see, they're almost identical in quality to the really, really expensive ones that you get from Tesla. So they're 140 bucks on Amazon, and right now they have a $10 off coupon just by clicking that little button. And I'll leave a link to these down below in the description. But if you also use All Electric 2 during checkout in the promotional code area, you can get an additional 14 bucks off, bringing them to only 120 bucks, 
which is really awesome considering these are half the price of the other floor mats and I think they are by far 10 times better than the other ones I had suggested. So click the link down below to buy these floor mats for your Model 3. Let's finally test Smart Summon in this parking garage to see how smart it is. So heading all the way up to the seventh level, all the way to the tippity top of this parking garage to test the enhanced summon. Okay, I did it again. It's smart summon, not enhanced summon. My apologies. But if it does pass our initial test, then we'll move on to going down multiple levels to see what happens. But my guess is that smart summon isn't quite smart enough yet. So you can see here, I'm gonna use the target point method to where I select a target on the map and we're gonna send it across and you can see that blue line on the app, the car is going to attempt to drive through what we know is a level change. So it's not gonna be able to drive through there and the car almost immediately recognizes that it's not gonna be able to drive through that and goes around this concrete barrier, which is great. I mean, that's really impressive that it corrects its path of travel that rapidly. Almost immediately, the camera system recognizes that there is a barrier there where it's not gonna be able to drive to. Now here, it almost to me looks like that the red car on the app isn't where my car physically is. Now you can see my car is a lot closer to that barrier wall because I'm driving over these empty parking spaces versus in the app, it looks like I'm on the other side on the other set of parking spaces. So not sure if that's because of the elevation that we're at or what, I thought GPS would be better when we're you know elevated off the ground. So now I'm gonna pick a target point, make this a little bit trickier for the car, knowing that it has to go down where that blue dot is, where I'm standing, to get around. And let's see what happens when we select a target point and let's see the path of travel that it decides to take. So once we select that path, you can see that it's gonna select a path of travel that it's not gonna be able to drive through. At least I hope it doesn't try to drive through. So I'm standing down near where the car passed before where you have to drive to get down to the next level where the target point is. So as you can see here from the video, it's kind of trapped in this little section um, and it's not gonna be able to go down. But let's see what happens. It looks like we did have some movement in the blue line in the app, but not enough movement for it to realize where it needs to go as far as going all the way around to get to the target point and that being the only direction. So let's see if the car is smart enough to make a complete U-turn here. And we're kind of uh, heading back and forth. It almost reminds me of the Austin Powers moment where he gets the golf cart stuck and it's just going forward and reverse, forward and reverse. So after several minutes of that, I did end up stopping the test because the car was not able to figure out how to get around. So now I wanna go back into the Tesla app and I wanna do the come to me feature. So that's where it's going to come to my phone's location, that blue dot like you saw previously in the other app view, but we get this beautiful rendering. So here, once we hold down the come to me button, you can see the climate control kicks on too. And we are getting a beautiful rendering of this little U-shaped corner here where the car got stuck previously. And since I'm not standing over there, it's able to kind of come in my direction. You can see uh, where I'm standing over there. So it's gonna come actually to my location. And as I move, that's dynamically changing as I move. So it's constantly kind of chasing my location. And you can see we, me from the app, I'm able to see a, that white line and it just updated my location there. So you can see it stopped for a moment and then did update my location. But I wanna see as we get further down this parking garage, what's gonna happen as we get into the parking garage is my GPS going to be skewed um, and the car not be able to recognize my exact location. So you can see it's struggling a little bit here, and that could be because I was standing there, and now it's just headed for a wall, and it says summons complete. So maybe it took my location and just said, all right, that's good enough. So let's hold the come to me button one more time. And I've really, like whoever worked on this at Tesla, I mean, this is just great. I love how we have 
kind of the uh, circle view of a bird's eye view and just this beautiful black and white rendering of what the car is seeing around it, kind of the walls that it's seeing and the path or the predicted path of travel, similar to the blue line in the other view. Now it did get a little close to that gray barrier, but you can see me kind of walking here and it does adjust its path of travel, that white line, as soon as I start jogging down the ramp. So this is the way out of the parking garage that it wasn't able to figure out when I was just doing the target point, but of course, following me, I know the way out as a human, and the car isn't smart enough yet to figure its way out of the parking garage, and since it didn't pass that, we're not going to attempt, at least with this software version, doing a multi-level summon. So summoning the car from the seventh level down to, let's say, the sixth level. But as we get underneath this uh, parking garage, so we're now underneath the seventh level on the sixth level, and it's still doing a pretty good job. Me at a brisk pace is able to stay in front of the car, even though it did stop there, and it looks like it's now in reverse. So I think that coming underneath this concrete that's above the vehicle is throwing off the GPS a little bit. So it did say uh, summon complete there. So overall, for the first iteration of the public release of Smart Summon, I think it did a pretty decent job. I was really impressed with the first initial summon, how it almost immediately saw that there was some obstacle in the way. But when we did do the second summon, where it kind of boxed itself in this corner here with a deep drop off, you could see that it just wasn't going to be able to figure that part out. Now, while I was shooting this video, I also had other su Smart Summon tests fail as well so that's something to keep in mind that this is very much a beta much like early versions of autopilot was where there's definitely a lot more things that need to be figured out before this is a well-polished system similar to how regular autopilot is on the highway now one of the other smart summon tests that i did was its nose pointed down towards the exit and the target point pointed all the way up on the top of the seventh level and it was smart enough pointing down that the visual system was able to recognize that it was completely blocked and had to go backwards and go around this concrete barrier to get up so i think it does a better job starting from the lower part and the optical systems in the car are able to see that it's not able to pass through versus when it's kind of above everything, the optical systems aren't picking up that it needs to go around the obstacle to get down, but it does do a good job when it's down and needs to go up. Something else with version 10 that I didn't think was gonna be this fun is this karaoke. So as you can see here, I'm in some pretty heavy traffic and I'm got karaoke, of course, YMCA, a great sing-along song and just jamming out to YMCA, sitting in traffic, in autopilot, so stress-free completely. Just great job, Tesla. Head over to my Amazon shop where I have all the products that I've recommended and tested in all of my videos, not to mention the gear that I use to make these videos. Huge shout out to my all electric tier supporters, Armana Min and Akram Atul. Thank you so much, guys. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so yet, Click that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one.